Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new machine quilting video. Last week we learned how to piece this beautiful rainbow stars quilt. You can click right here to find the quilt pattern at leahday.com. So this week I want to start the quilting process and I'm going to get started with walking foot quilting. So this video is going to include lots of extra tips and tricks for using your walking foot to stitch in the ditch and quilt some straight lines. So let's get started. So we're gonna get started stitching in the ditch right in the middle of the quilt. And I wanna share a few tools that are really helpful to do this and get started. The first are quilting gloves. I always wear gloves when quilting. It helps me grip the surface of the quilt and be able to move it easily. I also have a queen size supreme slider here on the table. This is a slippery Teflon sheet that just helps the quilt to move so much easier on the tabletop. Now, because I'm using a walking foot, I'm not gonna position the hole where it's designed to go right over the feed dogs. Instead, I've shifted this whole thing off the feed dogs. It's on the side of my table. It's still doing a great job to help the quilt move, but it's not gonna get chewed up by my walking foot. So another thing to keep in mind and kind of take a look at when you're stitching in the ditch is you need to be able to see your needle. You need to be able to see exactly where that needle is going to be dropping down into the quilt. And so I like to find an open toe walking foot and that just simply means that you can see the needle, there's nothing in front of it. If you have a walking foot that does not have that option, you can probably take it to a, a machinist or if your husband is handy or you are handy, you could probably take it and grind out the center section and be able to see your needle that much easier. Uh, I've been known to modify feet as much as possible if I need to. So that is always open to you to modify your foot if you need to. So as I'm stitching in the ditch, you'll notice that I'm working really slowly. I'm letting the walking foot walk and we're gonna walk slowly up the stitch I'm also lowered my stitch length down, so it's only about 1.4 millimeters. That means I'm producing tiny stitches, and that means that if I got off, I could correct myself pretty quickly because I'm only stitched off just a little bit with these tiny stitches. It also means that the layers of the quilt are gonna be nice and secure. So I've stitched from the middle out to one edge, and now I'm gonna rotate the quilt around. And I can rotate two ways. I have a knee lifter. That means that I can lift the foot with my knee, pushing against a bar, or I can reach behind the foot, lift it completely, and rotate the quilt around too. Most often I use my knee lifter. If you see the foot kind of bouncing up and down, that's me just using my knee lifter. That's what I'm most used to doing. So I rotate it around so I'm facing the direction I'm working in. And take a look at my hand placement here, where I put my hands on the quilt. They're nice and spread out, and my fingers are kind of gripping and spreading the quilt out, so it's nice and flat. And this is helping uh, the quilt to become stable, and as I stitch over these lines, everything's going together nice and even. I don't end up with maybe a, a kind of a puddle of extra fabric or something, or I accidentally stitch over a pleat. You want to watch out for things like that. Even with a walking foot, it's easy for the layers of the quilt to kind of not bead exactly evenly together. So your hands have a big role in quilting, keeping those layers flat and even and nicely feeding through the machine. So I'm stitching right off the stitch and I'm actually going to stitch into the batting area and then I'll break thread. And I do that simply because it's an easy way to end. I don't have to hide those loose thread tails. And whenever I go to bind the quilt, I'll be able to fix that edge and secure it with my binding. So it's nothing to worry about. So from here, all I'm gonna do is slide the quilt back into the center of the machine. Get it nice and comfortable and don't hesitate to kind of squish your quilt around. I don't roll it necessarily. I just kind of squish it and get it in position. The nice thing in this, this quilt is only 32 inches, so it's nice and manageable on a home sewing machine. And I pull up thread, I just use, do that by rotating my hand wheel around, and I'm just gonna get started stitching another ditch. Now, I'm gonna continue finishing all of these stitches, and I'll meet you back here when we're ready to try some straight line quilting. Something you may be wondering about is starts and stops. So that's wherever you start quilting and quilt off the edges obviously of the star and then of course pull back up and stitch in the opposite direction. 
So I very rarely started in the center of the star simply because there's a lot of seam allowances here, a lot of bulk in that area, and that could be a really tricky place to start. So instead, I would start either in the middle of that seam or even on the opposite side of the diamond, stitch all the way across and then off the edge of the quilt, and then you can pull up thread there and stitch off in the opposite direction. So understand you don't have to start right smack dab in the center, just wherever you start, keep an eye on that because when you come back on the other side, you wanna match up with that and stitch in the opposite direction too. So now that our quilt is stitched in the ditch, it's time to quilt along some marked lines. I've gone through and marked a half of an inch inside each diamond space. And the reason I marked it is it's just simply easier to quilt on a marked line. I know it's spaced out evenly, I know it's gonna be no trouble, and I don't have to question and worry about lining something up with the edges of my foot. So take it from me, I really think taking the time to mark your quilt will ultimately mean it takes less time to quilt it. So let's shift the quilt around and get started stitching on some of these marked lines. So I'm gonna get started stitching right on this line, just straight towards myself. And you can see, yes, I probably could have used the edge of the foot as a guide here, but I don't like to do that. I don't like to do it for two reasons. Number one, it wouldn't help me with my angle. So down here, I wouldn't know exactly where to stop and make this turn, this direction change. So that's a little tricky. And then also, it's really easy to accidentally just forget which line that you're, you're working with. So in this case, it would be this far edge of the foot. And I might accidentally end up lining it up with the blade of the foot right here and then end up with lines that were closer together or further apart. So for me, I just think that stitching on mark lines is the easier option. So here I rotated the quilt and now I'm just stitching on down. And this is a situation where we can put our foot down and get a little bit more speed with our walking foot. And the reason is this is a marked line, which means that after we stitch it, if we stitch off a little bit, we can erase it and no one will know that we meant to stitch it differently. With the ditches, we really wanted to stitch slowly and carefully simply because uh, we wanted it to be a little bit more precise. So I've come to the tip of that point and I'm gonna rotate the whole quilt around. And this can be a little bit of what is frustrating about walking foot quilting, of always having to rotate the quilt around and always having to have whatever you're stitching right in front of you and facing you. Uh, but the key with this of making it feel easier is having a flatbed sewing table. So your machine is down on the same surface as the tabletop. And then to surround your table with more tables, uh, like basically expand the surface so you have a nice large table all around you. So that way the quilt has something to fall back on so that you're not trying to either quilt over the hump of your machine or having the quilt kind of catch on the edges of your machine. So yes, rotating is definitely required, but it can feel a lot easier depending on your quilting setup. It can feel really, really hard and difficult if it's your, set, your machine is set up on the table, or it can feel really easy if your machine is down on a tabletop and it's easy to just slide the quilt over the surface. So I'm working my way back down to the tip of this diamond and I wanna go on ahead and secure these thread tails. So they're out of my way so I can quilt right up to it and break thread in that spot. So I'm gonna tie a knot. This is just an overhand knot. Tighten it up and I'm not tightening it up right to the edge of the quilt. I'm tightening it up about an eighth of an inch away because I wanna be able to hide that knot in the center layer of the quilt. So I'm gonna insert a cheater needle into the quilt. This is a special needle that has a groove instead of an eye, and that allows me to quickly pop the thread tails into that groove and be able to bury my thread tails super, super fast. Now, if you wanna see a more detailed and step-by-step -step video for that, definitely check it out at leahday.com. That was kind of my super speedy version, and I have much more detailed videos on that on my website. So I'm gonna stitch further on down, just staying right on that line. And I hope you can see how much easier it is when you have the lines marked, because you don't have to question, you don't have to worry about what's lining up with what or constantly be you know, vigilantly lining things up on your machine. 
So now I'm going to slide. I lifted my presser foot and slid the quilt over. And now I'm going to hit my thread cutter and that's going to leave nice long thread tails so I can hide, tie off and bury these thread tails in the middle layer of the quilt too. So that way everything's nice and secure. And you know, looking at these beautiful open spaces, this would be a great space to play with different free motion quilting designs. So I think that would be a really fun way to fill in each of the diamonds in the rainbow star. Just think of a different free motion quilting design that you like, pull up thread and fill in this space with that design. So that's it for this video. We got a lot of practice with walking foot quilting, stitching in the ditch, and straight line quilting all within this video. I really hope that you'll jump on your machine and give this a try. And if you have any questions, definitely ask in the comments below this video. If you'd like to learn more about machine quilting, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel. I share new videos on machine quilting, free motion, and walking foot style every single week. So definitely check that out at YouTube. And until next time, let's go quilt.